Hello everybody, this is Vasvi from Atcom Tuition. In this video, I am going to talk about some basic algebraic functions and their graphs. You are probably most familiar with identity function, right? Say for instance, the identity function is like when you get your y value and the x value same. So here your f of x, which is otherwise also known as y, okay? Your f of y, x is equal to x or, sorry, this is not 0. Your y is equal to x, okay? Where your x is all real numbers. In that case, what happens is the identity function shows a real value function here. And then uh, it is a straight line passing through the origin, okay? When you graph it, it would be a straight line passing through the origin. And... It is uh, called identity function because uh, whatever value the x takes, the y also has the same value, okay? So here that's why they say y is equal to x. When your x is 0, your y is also 0. When your x is 2, your y is 2. When you give x as 4, your y is 4. So when you join all this, likewise when x is negative 2, your y is also negative 2. So likewise you get all these points and this line would be a straight line which passes through the origin, okay. Here your domain would be any, any number, right, any real number and the range is also the same because f of x is y and uh, that is equal to your x. So your range will also be a real number. Next is the modulus function or the absolute value function. A relative of identity function is absolute value function. Like, you know, here your f of x is, e is equal to modulus of x. Or you can say absolute value of x, where x is a real number. So x can be any real number. So it can range from minus infinity to plus infinity. Your domain is minus infinity to plus infinity. and But your range will always be a positive number. If your domain is 0, your range, I mean, if your x is 0, your y will also be 0. And when your x is positive number, see here you can see on the right, on the right side of the graph, it is like the identity function, right? Because when your x is 0, your y is 0. And when x is a positive number, y is also the same positive, positive number. So you get a straight line here till 0 and the right side of the graph is like identity function. But when it comes to the negative values, okay, when x is minus values, since it's an absolute function, your range, your y value is going to be positive only. So it is marked this side. So here it goes till it, till it is 0, the, when the value is positive. And uh, till it is 0, it is like identity function. And uh, when the value turns to be negative, it would be uh, on the second quadrant here. Because your y values are always positive. It's an absolute function, right? So, you see, the function is defined as y is x when x is greater than or equal to 0. And your y is x when it is less than or equal to 0. When your x is negative, it is less than 0, right? But still then it is x only. Absolute value is x. That's why we say the range is from 0 to positive infinity. Okay? And here you would find, you would get a V-shape here. It forms a V-shape and it would be uh, centered at the origin. It is, so this function is an even function. And it is symmetrical, okay, um, the, with respect to its y-axis. It is symmetrical. So, when you fold this graph, you will say that it lies on top of the other, other line, okay. The third one is a constant function where your f of x is a constant number. So, your y is always a constant. So, x can take up any, they say x is a real number, right. 
So your domain is real. It can take up any value, any negative, positive or even zero. But whatever value the x takes up, your uh, y is going to be the same, this constant. Okay. So in this example, I have just drawn you f of x equal to 0. The constant is, I mean, equal, equals to 3. Here the constant is 3. Okay. So your y is always equal to 3. Whatever be the value of x. So that would be a parallel line to the x-axis. So your domain is real number and your range is always that constant. Next is polynomial functions. So here I can tell you the squaring function as well as the cubic function. So first let us look at the squaring function. Here the function uh, uh, y, uh, that is y is equal to f of x is equal to x square where x is the real number okay so what happens is your y is always a positive number because since you square the negative number it becomes a positive uh, value right so your domain can be any real number but your range would be uh, positive real numbers okay so it is like you know Mm, the squaring function is also an even function. Here, any coordinate, just look at any coordinate on the right side. So, if I take this one, this would be 2, 2, right? Since it is a squaring function, you mark the other side by changing the sign of your x coordinate. So, this would be minus 2, 2. Okay, likewise every coordinate on your right will have a negative uh, x coordinate, uh, a coordinate with negative uh, value in the x. Okay, and you get this picture. Understood, it is a u shaped picture, and uh, since it is a square, both uh, the legs faces upwards. And it is all positive values. So your domain is a real number ranging from minus infinity to plus infinity. But the range would be always a positive real number. Okay. It would be from 0 to positive infinity. Now look at, look at the cubic function. This is an odd function. You call it an odd function. Here. It is symmetric with respect to origin, okay? Here your function is y equals f of x which is equal to x cube where x is a real number. So here you would find this graph symmetric towards its origin, okay? With respect to its origin. That is, uh, when I say symmetric to the origin, it means when you spin the graph holding the center, okay? Holding the origin, if you just rotate this paper uh, to 180 degrees, you would find the original position back. See, any coordinate you take here, say for instance, if I take this point, or okay, let me take this point, this is 2 comma 4, right? You will have a corresponding point this side, which is just the opposite sign, okay? Here you will have negative 2 comma negative 4. Likewise, every coordinate will have a similar uh, coordinate with opposite sign. Okay. So, this is about the cubic function. So, these two are polynomial functions. And you have uh, yet another function called rational function. Rational function is like where, where you write like f of x over g of x. Okay. Where your g of x is not going to be 0 at all your y is equal to function of x which is equal to 1 over x where your x is not equal to 0. Your denominator is never 0. So what happens? The domain and range both are real numbers except 0. Understood? Since x can never take up the denominator can never be 0 you are not going to touch the origin at all. And when you substitute values here, you get the graph like this, which just turns this side uh, as it comes closer to the zero. Likewise, even on the top. Okay, this is the rational function. You have a signum function. 
where the relation is defined like when x is positive your y is 1 when x is equal to 0 your y is also equal to 0 and when x is less than 0 that is when x is negative the y value is just negative always okay so it is plotted here so whenever you have a positive value for x you see that the y value is 1 and when x is 0 your y is 0 and when you have an, have negative values for x you see that your y is constantly negative 1. Here your domain can be any number right like from negative infinity to positive infinity including the 0 but the range will have only 3 values like negative 1, 0 and positive 1. This is signum function and finally you have a greatest integer function where your y is equal to f of x and it is the greatest integer value of x okay and the x is a real number so by greatest integer value what we mean is, is explained here from the definition the greater value of uh, x is greater integer value of x at different times is given here when x is greater than or equal to negative 1 but less than 0 greatest integer value of x would be negative 1 okay and when it is from 0 to less than 1 you take it as 0 when it is 1 greater than or equal to 1 to less than 2 you take the minimum value here okay 2 I mean here it is 1 and this when your x is greater than or equal to 2 and less than 3 it is going to be 2 and it goes on like that so when you plot the picture would be like this okay this is the graph for the greater integer function f of x equals greater integer function of x thank you for watching my video i'll meet you with some more in the next class bye